It's time again for the Science Bowl. Zoo Parade for Five. What big teeth the hippo has are actually a pair of these. Science Potpourri for 10. Would a snake most likely eat every day? Every week, Dateline Science for 10. Why are some elephants wearing necklaces these days? Green things for 15. And now, here's your host, Mr. Z himself, Dave Zarin. Thank you very much and welcome to the Science Bowl. This is the game show where we test scientific literacy among elementary and middle school students here in Prince George's County. This is our 33rd year doing that and we invite you to play along and maybe raise your own science IQs. Let's meet today's teams, two outstanding middle schools. First of all, from Oxon Hill, would you please say hello to Nori Ahasu, Lawrence Balunsat, and Jenny Taguba. And from Stephen Decatur Middle School, here they are, Jimmy Latu Bio, Malat a Snake, and Isabella Howard. And now here are the categories of questions we use on the Science Bowl. Okay, Mr. Z, here's today's categories. Green Things, questions about plants and all things green and growing. Zoo Parade, a Noah's Ark of questions about animals. Body Systems, we'll see how much you know about yourself about things like breathing and growing and digesting your food. Let's get physical. Questions that test your knowledge of physics and chemistry, earth science and space science. Then there's science potpourri. Here's a grab bag of science questions. Everything from air pollution to the kitchen zinc. And finally, Dateline Science. We'll ask you about science history and science in the news. And here on the Science Bowl, we arrange our game board according to the difficulty of the question. The easier questions there on the left worth five and 10 points. They get increasingly more difficult, 15, 20, ultimately 25, the toughest of them all. Both of our teams start out at 50 points. Never any penalties for incorrect answers. At the end of the two rounds today, one of these very talented teams is gonna come back to play Walker Mill for the chance to become the first of this year's four semifinalists in our middle school competition. Let's make sure everything works properly before we start. Lawrence, could you give that buzzer of yours a push? All right, looks and sounds just good. Lawrence, good luck to you and to Nori and to Jenny. And Malat, would you give the green teams? Very good, looking good. Malat and Isabella and Jemmy Latu, nice. Some of you have been here before. It's nice to have you back on the set. And for those of you that are here for the first time, welcome to the show. Let's have a good game. Uh, congratulations. All of you are here because your schools think you are terrific. We think you're terrific. You've already won. You don't have to prove anything, but let's have a good game. O comes before S and we go alphabetically here. So Oxen Hill and Lawrence, let's play this game. Give um, me a category and a number. Okay. Dayline Science for 10. Dayline Science for 10 points. Teams, the it is interesting that in order to save the lives of these creatures that lives that live in the ocean, they're going to be pumping cold water up from below. These are creatures that oftentimes get bleached. Can you name them? We're talking about coral reefs, coral reefs, polyps in reefs. Try again, Red. Um, let's get physical for 15. Let's get physical for 15 points. A multiple choice question, team. Some of the heat that gets trapped in a greenhouse is lost through the glass by conduction, convection, or radiation. The three ways heat is transferred. What you got, Malat? Conduction. You got it, conduction, yeah, because it's right up against the glass and by physically touching it, some of that heat escapes back into the atmosphere. Good start, go green. Um. Body systems for 10. Body systems for 10 points. Teams, the ancient Egyptians were not all that enthralled with the cerebral mystique, caring not for this organ at all, thinking that the main organ in the body was the heart instead. What organ did they not, did they not care about? The cerebral mystique. They cared nothing for it. Malat? The brain. The brain, yeah. In fact, when they mummified people, they would simply drain out the brain and throw it away. They didn't care, but they took the heart and they put it inside urns and they buried it with the mummy because it was so revered. Go again, green. Listen for the clues in the question. Go green. Let's get physical for 20. Let's get physical for 20 points, teams. It is a visual question. Look at the monitor in the studio, please. If you watch television, you've probably seen 
Lure Caverns in Virginia, a beautiful place to go underground. And the TV ad says, visit Lure, where Mother Nature has sprung a leak. Water has been dripping for millions of years and making those stalactites and stalagmites. I'll give you these 20 points if you can tell me what kind of sedimentary rock those icicles are made of. If you know your rocks, and they're made of limestone. Limestone. Go again, green. Um, body systems for 15. Body systems for 15 points. Teams, you may remember those boys in Thailand that were trapped in that cave for five days. They were eventually saved. Not only were they hungry, but they were also threatened with hypoxia. What didn't, what was another thing they didn't have enough of in addition to food? Oxygen. Stephen Decatur. Oxygen. Oxygen. Hypoxia. Hypo means less. Oxia means oxygen. Put them together, less oxygen. Go ahead. Let's start putting some things together. I want to see you talk to each other a little more. Malat, go. Science potpourri for 10. Potpourri for 10 points. Teams, this is pretty strange. But some cosmeticians are now putting in false eyelashes to keep them from sticking together tiny pieces of metal that are these that have a positive and a negative side. Stephen Decatur? Magnets? Yeah, they're putting little magnets inside there to keep those lashes apart. They have to be pretty darn tiny, otherwise you know, your eyes would be kind of heavy. Thanks, Jimmy Latu. Good answer. Go green. Let's get physical for 25. Let's get physical for 25 points. Teams, the reason why bubbles are round is because of this force that actually pulls all the water molecules together. The initials of the force are S and T. What force? Surface tension. Surface tension. Go again, Green. Body systems for 20. Body systems for 20 points. In a hospital, the drips that people have bring medication into someone's body. Those drips are known as IVs. I'll give you the 20 points if you can tell me what IV stands for. Ever, have you ever seen people in hospitals with drips? They have those bags next to them. That's putting medication into their veins, within their veins. So IV means intra is the I, venous is the V, intra venous. All right, we're not getting anywhere with the higher valued points. Maybe we go with some of the lesser valued ones, but that's up to you. Go green. Body system for five. Body system for five points. Teams, you know, sometimes we human beings, we hurt ourselves. We puncture our eardrums, sometimes we bite our tongue, and sometimes we stub our what? Stephen Decatur? Toe. Yeah. Again? Toe. Toe, yes, you stub your toe, yeah. Usually in the middle of the night when you're going, oh, bang, you know, don't know what's going on. Okay, buzzer says first round is over. Our score, Stephen Decatur 105, Oxen Hill will stand at the, still at the starting gate at 50. They'll add some points in the second half, and we'll be back with that half in just one moment. Welcome back to Science Bowl. So nice to have you here. We're at the beginning of our season here. Yes, this is our 33rd year, and we have had some excellent students play our game, and we have some wonderful students here today, too. Some of them here for the first time. It takes a little while to get your sea legs. Yeah, so if the scores aren't way up there yet, they're trying to figure all this out. Is this, is this guy throws lots of fast questions at them. But before I ask any more fast science questions, let's find out a little bit about our players. Let's go first to Oxen Hill. And Lawrence, welcome back to the show. Nice to have you here from Oxon Hill, and uh, tell me about your school. Who's your um, principal? Our principal is Mr. Coleman. Absolutely, and Oxon Hill was the county champ not too many years ago, and I remember Mr. Coleman on the picture, on our poster, and he was so proud of what Oxon Hill had done that year, and I know you're going to do him proud this year, too. Who's your coach? Um, Miss Ward. Miss Ward, and she is out there. She is pulling for you down there in the green room, and you don't have any alternates with you today, right? No. Okay. Uh, Tell me something about Oxon Hill you think the audience should know. Something great. Uh, I think something great about our school is, like, I think the teams are good. Our soccer teams and sports teams, I mm. think those are, like, good. And you play soccer, don't you? Yeah. Oh, I'm trying out for the team. You're trying out for the team. I think, Nora, you're a soccer player, too. And Jenny, I don't know if you play <laughs> soccer, but it's a very, a lot of people play soccer. Um, it's a great school. And uh, you proved that by winning the county championship. Tell me about yourself. What do you do in your spare time? Um, 
I like to play sports and play video games over my time. That's great. And tell me why you wanted to be on the show. Why you came last year. I wanted to be on the show because I feel like science is like my favorite subject over everything else. Wow. That's yeah. music to our ears here because we like to hear that. And what do you want to do someday professionally? Um, as a profession, I want to join the Naval Academy and get into the medical field or the engineering field. Wow. Well, just do everything right and stay in touch with your Congress people because you need an appointment to Annapolis and uh, hope to see you someday as a, as a plea down there. You'd be a good one. Nori, nice to have you here today. You are a soccer player, aren't you? Yes. Yes. And you like to read. Tell us uh, the kinds of books you like to read. Um, I really like um, fiction, realistic fiction, mm. things that I can just, you know, picture in my head. I, I really, I really dislike non-fiction. Yeah. I'm not really into informational texts. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I just like to pick up a good fictional book and, yeah. you know, I just like to let my mind wander. Absolutely. Books just kind of take you away and I'm with you. Sometimes, you know, informational books are good, but give me a good made-up story, you know, that's really well done. Um, tell me what you want to do. Would you like to be an author yourself? I thought about it, but um, I'm pretty sure my books would be too complex <laughs> for its readers. So what do you think you might want to do? Um, I think I, c I could just, you know, stick with law because it's really sparked my interest over the years. I've seen, like, my inspiration, Thurgood Marshall, I'm just like, he's on the Supreme Court, and now I'm over here, I'm like, I want to I wanna do that too. I want to I wanna be like him. It's going to be terrific. And I know you indicated on the form you wrote for me that you do want to be a judge someday. So yep. thanks for sharing that with us. And Jenny, nice to see you here. Uh, I saw Jenny last when she was a contestant in the County Spelling Bee. And here she is. So you're a multi-talented young lady. And tell me what your plans are for the future. Um, I might want to become a doctor and an engineer. Yeah, but you didn't tell them that this, that you wanted to have the highest GPA ever, is that right? And uh, what else did you want to do? Mm. Was there something else that was, you wanted to be the best of something? Well, having the highest GPA would be more than enough. What do you do in your spare time, Jenny? I watch a lot of YouTube. Yeah, okay. Why are you here? Why did you want to be play our game? Um, a lot of my classmates were here before, yeah. and I wanted to see what it was like. Good. Well, we're, we're happy to have you here. Let's go over to Stephen Decatur and Malat. Nice to have you back again. So this is old hat for you. What do you like about the Science Bowl? Um, I like that it's kind of like Jeopardy. Yeah. Very much. I'm sorry we don't have all that money to give away like <laughs> Jeopardy does. Tell me about Stephen Decatur. Who's your principal? Dr. Magruder. Absolutely. She's out there. For, uh, she or he? She. She. That's right. Yes, it's out there. Uh, rooting for you, and who's the sponsor of your team? Mr. De La Cruz. Absolutely, and he has been a wonderful sponsor over the years, and uh, thank you, Samuel, for all the work you have done, and uh, to Rhea as well from Oxen Hill. Tell us, did you have any alternates on your team? Yeah, we had one, Jason Castellon. He'll be out in just a moment here, and uh, tell the audience something about your school that you like to brag about. We have a lot of clubs and activities to choose. Yeah. Because it shouldn't all be academic. You need extracurriculars. You've got to add yeah. some spice to that life at school. Yeah, thank you. Tell me about yourself. Uh, you're interested in astronomy, yeah? Yes. Yeah. Someday hoping to? What do you want to do when you grow up? Um, I want to be in the medical field because I just like to help people. Yeah, that's, that's the best uh, reason, you know, the noblest reason to get into that. Uh, Isabella, you're an astronomer too. You have a telescope. Yes. What's the best thing you've ever seen or the neatest thing you've ever seen through your telescope? Um, another planet. Wow. Which one was it? Could you tell? Um, Mars, I think. Yeah, the angry red planet, which is pretty close. And of course, we would like to get to Mars someday. And the, the, the Martian, that was a great movie where we saw um, that astronaut tried to survive up there. <laughs> tell me, um, what is it uh, you hope to do professionally someday? I want to become a veterinarian. Do you have any pets at home? No, I'm not allowed. Not allowed? Well, we got to get you a pet somehow so you could practice, you know, being a vet. Uh, I like to watch uh, Dr. Paul on TV, the, the vet that's out there in, the, in Michigan. Jimmy Latu, you're back again. Why do you come back to the Science Bowl? What do you like about it? Um, I like the diversity and the different types of um, science questions that you guys give. 
and yeah. I find that very interesting. Well, thank you. We tried to, that is our intent. And I know you love poetry. Yes. And uh, someday you want to be a surgeon, correct? Yeah. Um, it was funny that he was talking about the Naval Academy. Yeah. Because me and my family are trying to, well, I should say me, but I talked to my family about it. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to choose between the Naval Academy or the um, Air Force Academy. Got in Colorado, also yes. beautiful campus, too. Yeah. Something tells me you have a, a, a great chance of getting in. You, have, you just have a nice way about you, you have a maturity, and uh, yeah, you're a good young lady. All right, let's get back to the game. Decatur 105, Oxon Hill 50. Come on, Oxon Hill, I want to see some numbers up there. I want to see some flipping numbers. Okay, Malat, let's go. Let's get physical for 10. Let's get physical for 10 points. Teams, big words, but a simple answer. The aphelion and the perihelion are the two points in the Earth's orbit when it is closest and farthest from what celestial body? The moon. The, not the moon. Oxen Hill. The sun. The sun. The sun, yes. Helion is the clue there. Helios, the sun god. Okay, go red. Yay, points. <laughs> Let's get more. Zoo prayed for five. Zoo prayed for five points. Teams, uh, Described by Australians as wombats in trees, this marsupial can digest eucalyptus leaves because it has a special enzyme. What is this cuddly marsupial's name? Come on, guys. What is it? Koalas. The koala bear, yeah. If you don't know a koala, you don't know anything about Australia. Go green. Let's get physical for five. Let's get physical for five points. The actor Will Smith is the host of a new program on National Geographic called One Strange Rock. It's about this fifth largest planet. Name it. Earth. Earth. One Strange Rock. See, I threw you with that, didn't I? Go green. Um, science potpourri for five. Potpourri for five points. Team, some manufacturers say that these soy and almond beverages shouldn't be called this because they don't come from a lactating animal. A lot? Milk. Milk, yes. Yeah, soy milk and almond milk, you know, you can't pull an udder and get it. You know, it doesn't come from a cow, so maybe it shouldn't be called milk. Go green. Super for 10. Do pray for 10 points. All right, teams. The Chesapeake Bay's waters are getting cleaner because of a lot of muscle. Not biceps muscle, but those bivalve muscles that filter the water. I'll give you 10 points if you can spell that muscle. All right, we got a speller over there. Jenny, not to put you on the spot, you've rung in. Spell muscle for me. Not this kind, but the little bivalve muscle. Are you going to be our speller? Okay, hit it. M U S S L E. Ooh, close, close. Stephen Decatur, you get a shot here if you can spell muscle. M U S S E L. That's it. It's the E before the L. All right, green team, good comeback, go. Dateline signs for five. Dateline for five points. Teams, King Kong might have climbed the Empire State Building, but recently one of these masked Mammals climbed a 22-story skyscraper in downtown Minneapolis. It was all over the news. It was a raccoon. A raccoon climbed right up the side of that building, and they, there were people in the windows. The raccoon didn't care. He had no net. He made it to the top, went over the top, and fell asleep. Okay, Green, let's go. Signs Pope for 15. Okay, for 15 points. Teams of the Jurassic Park and Jurassic World movies have sparked an interest in this scientific field. A lot of kids want to go into this field. The study of dinosaurs, what is it? Paleontology. That's it, paleontology. Come on, guys. Come on, have you seen Jurassic Park? Ever? Any of those films? Okay, go green. Zoo prayed for 15. Zoo prayed for 15 points. There's a this is a visual question. Look at the monitor in the studio, please, if you would. Teams, if you ever had a pet bearded dragon or a pet gecko, you probably fed it the, a mealworm. That's what you see there. That mealworm, though, is one step in the metamorphosis of the darkling beetle. What step in metamorphosis does this worm represent? Now, you have to know the steps of metamorphosis. Which step is that? Lawrence? Larvae. Larvae. That's right. It's the larvae. Good. Okay. Red. 
All right, green things for 10. Green things for 10 points. Teams, this food that feeds more people on earth than any other, this plant, grows in patties, P-A-D-D-I-E-S. Name that plant that more people eat than any other in the whole world. Stephen Decatur. Rice. Rice, that's it, absolutely. You know, the Czech cereals, wheat checks and rice checks and corn checks, those are the big three. Rice it is. Green, go. Green things for 15. For 15 points. Teams, Charles Darwin's 1832 book, Insectivorous Plants, had a quote from Charles Darwin that said, this insectivorous plant is the most wonderful in the world. Name it. Venus flytrap? Yeah, what else? Venus flytrap, good. Thank you, Nori. Go, Lawrence. Um, green things for 20. Green things for 20 points. Teams, some farmers say that they are very happy that there is research to change corn plants that we have to plant every year into plants that come back every year all by themselves. So maybe they can genetically change corn from an annual plant into one of these kinds of plants. Perennial. Jenny, what do you want to tell me? Perennial. Perennial, that's it, an annual, and make it a perennial. Now you're cooking, go, red. Um, green things for 25. Green things for 25, big one in that category, teams. This S initial part of a flower that is almost always green surrounds the bud and then looks like a ring around the flower after it opens. S initialed. It's called a sepal, S-E-P-A-L. Sounds like petal, but it is not. Go red. Zoo parade for 20. Zoo parade for 20 points. Teams, an octopus and a squid are both known as cephalopods. C-E-P-H-A-L-O-P-O-D, which literally means this with legs attached to it. What does cephalo mean? Head. It's a head with legs attached to it. Go again, red. Zoo parade for 25. Zoo parade for 25 points. Teams, if you go to the movies, and if you like superheroes, you know Spider-Man. Spider-Man is the most famous arthropod superhero. But recently, there was a movie starring Scott Lang and Hope Van Dyne, who were these two arthropod superheroes. Name them both. Decatur. Ant-Man and Wasp. Got it. Good. Go. Red, green. Body systems for 25. Body systems, 25 points, teams. To help you go to sleep, there's a drug, there's a chemical called melatonin. It works. Melatonin is what same kind of chemical as estrogen and adrenaline and insulin that are in your body. Same group of chemicals. Melatonin's one of those. It's a hormone. Try again, Green. Signs potpourri for 20. Potpourri for 20 points. Team, some of you know that chameleons can change colors. Well, it's also been discovered that their bones glow in the dark if you subject them to a black light. A black light is also known as what kind of light? Ultraviolet. You got it. UV light. That's the way to do it, Lawrence. Go. Um, Dateline signs for 15. Deadline signs for 15 points. Teams, this sounds very strange, but a group of Japanese scientists spent seven years, seven years studying catfish and how they wiggled their tails, thinking it might be related to the occurrence of earthquakes in Japan, which are measured, earthquakes are, on what scale? Seismic. Not seismic, good try. What is the, what is the scale that measures earthquake intensity, Oxen Hill? That's the Richter scale. Go again, red. Science Pope Brie for 25. Pope Brie for 25 points. All right, teams, let's see how much you know about measurements. If you watch television and they talk about diabetes drugs, they always talk about the amount of blood sugar you have. Blood sugar is measured in MGs per DLs. MGs per DLs. Tell me what both of those abbreviations stand for for 25 points. MGs per DL. Milligrams per deciliters. Okay, we have two questions. We have three questions left. We're red. Go. You can still do it. Dayline signs for 20. Dayline signs for 20 points. 
teams what famous inventor who came up with the SpaceX rockets and the Tesla automobiles? Elon Musk. Elon Musk, that's it, that would be he. He also wanted to send a submarine into the cave to rescue those Thai guys, those Thai boys that were stranded. All right, go. Dayline Science for 25. For 25 points, teams, you've all heard of the EpiPen. If someone is allergic, they need to get that EpiPen in order to survive. Epi is a shortened form of what term? What does Epi stand for? Epinephrine. Epinephrine, yes indeed. Last question of the game, green things for five points. Let's check that score. Oh, it's not gonna be quite enough, but even if you get it, green things for five points. If you are a fervent and environmentalist, people say you go around hugging these green things. Trees. You're a tree hugger, that's it. And talking about green things, Stephen Decatur, that's the green team. It looks like they've done it. We'll be back with the wrap up in just a moment. Don't go away. Welcome back to Science Bowl. Well, what a second half we had here. Oxen Hill was way down and they came back. They almost tied. Our final tally today is Oxen Hill 155. Stephen Decatur, what a game they played. 200 points. Stephen Decatur, you are going to be playing Walker Mill. Let's give them a round of applause. Jimmy Latu and Milad and Isabella. Mr. De La Cruz, congratulations to you. And Jason, congratulations as the alternate. Oxen Hill, Nori and Lawrence and Jenny, you played a great game. Let's give them a round of applause too. Miss Ward, their wonderful sponsor, and their principal, Mr. Wendell Coleman, is here today, and we appreciate him being here to endorse our game. And we thank you for joining us and hope you'll tune us in again for another edition of Science Bowl. I'm Dave Zarin, and I hope to see you then. Bye-bye.